Hello, and welcome to the Tea Pod. Today's topic is a little different. I recently acquired a hard copy book about tea titled Rishi Tea and Botanicals Lookbook Volume 3. This is a new brand of tea. I've never heard of it before. Uh, the front of the book has a foreword explaining what a lookbook is and more about the company itself. So a lookbook is quote unquote part menu and part educational reference. Rishi is a direct trade importer of organic teas and botanicals. They take their name from ancient Sanskrit, which means one who is a seer, sage, or seeker of truth. It's pronounced Rishi. If I were to buy this book, uh, it costs $12 off of Rishi's website. It's harder to find off of other websites like Amazon, but $12 really isn't that expensive, so I would probably just buy it from them. The cover is of a tropical tea farm. It's pretty for on a bookshelf or on the table as a conversation starter. When you open it up, you're met with a table of contents, even though when you're reading, the book isn't exactly divided into distinct chapters, more by general categories and types of teas. The table of contents is useful if you're using it as a reference book or to refine information. Is it a catalog or a book? Kind of both. It has pictures of all the teas they talk about, as well as a flavor profile for each, but no prices. So if you want to buy a tea, you have to go online and find it on their website. As a book, it's full of information and interesting fun facts. For example, did you know that rooibos was traditionally harvested in South Africa, popularized in the tea industry because the Dutch wanted to find an African alternative to black tea? Uh, the book is full of high quality pictures, lots and lots of pictures, which help to keep you engaged. It explains basic tea processing, as well as terms like what a cultivar is, polyphenol oxidation, what a gaiwan is, etc. It's not too technical. Some terms they skip over or don't bother explaining that you would have to look up for yourself, but it's largely unimportant and does not impede your understanding or enjoyment of the book. They include a bunch of different charts as you read, such as an oxidation chart, a chart for your Japanese tea definitions, as well as one for poor brewing colors. They give overviews of iconic tea regions like Taiwan, Thailand, Yunnan, Fujian, and highlight key locations they source from, including information about where it is, who they work with, and what they source from that location. Take white tea, for example. White tea's geographic highlight was Hubei, China. So Hubei is located in central China. It's an interior province. Rishi partners with hundreds of local growers there to help provide healthcare support, access to education, and other improvements for the partnering families. That, from that location, they source high quality organic green teas, which are then made into teas such as Jade Cloud. The book has a nice balance of teas and tisans, or as they call it, botanicals, like Mushroom Hero, Omiza Beauty Berry, and they have a whole section on vanilla bean processing. In the back of the book, there's a glossary of tea wares like chashakus, what's a chashaku, or what's a gaiwan, and you could buy any of those items. The book is good if you're learning how to describe teas because each tea comes with a picture of the loose leaves, the name, place of origin, ingredients, followed by an informative description. Take bancha, for example. The name is bancha. It comes from Japan. The ingredients are just organic green tea. And the description is as follows. Bancha is the traditional daily green tea found throughout Japan. It's made of mature tea leaves and stems from the autumn harvest. Bancha is gently pan roasted to develop a nutty sweet flavor and golden infusion. Bancha makes a wonderfully quenching cold brew tea and has a mild caffeine level due to its roasting process. My impression of the book was I really enjoyed reading it. It's short, you can read it in a day. I read it on a plane. It's soft cover, which I like better for reading. I would 100% recommend it to someone as a good introduction to tea or for anyone who wants a little more than the basics. I myself learned a lot of new facts and added new teas to my list to eventually buy and try, like Mushroom Hero, Butterfly Pea Flower Powder, and Moonlight Jasmine. I hope to try tea from Rishi in the near future. When I do, I'll let you know what I think. Check them out on their website. Have you ever tried a Rishi tea? Which one and how was it? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for more episodes. See you next time on the Teapod.